kindness. So, Caleb? Plays them fast like that, but it is a little fast. Put that record on a slower speed. <laughs> I know, slow, slower, slow it down a little bit. Um, well, I'm going to open us up uh, with a word of prayer, and then we'll get going uh, through uh, angels again. We got about 15 minutes, so we'll see what we can cover in about 15 minutes. Uh, Father, we just thank you again uh, for the day that you've given us, Lord. The sunshine that I saw outside when I came in here, Father, is just a, a great thing. We just thank you for your provisions this day, Lord. I thank you for uh, those that are here, Lord, the families that are here, that are uh, a part of Sunday school. Lord, we just ask that you use this lesson, Lord, the lesson about angels to uh, give us a, a, a greater and a fuller understanding of you as our God. And help us to be reminded again that we, we don't worship angels. You are the only one uh, that we are to adore and worship, and we want to give you praise today, and we want you to be in this hour, or I guess as we are here now, the uh, last few minutes of Sunday school, Lord, guide us. Pray that you'd uh, open a building up for us too, Lord, that you would uh, find uh, just what we need uh, for the amount of finances, Lord, that you know that we have. Father, we know that you can do great and marvelous things, and we just commit that to you. <clears throat> in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Okay, angels, 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 continuing on through, we covered the moral classification of angels, we had a kind of a good discussion a little bit with uh, uh, Aisha this week, and she was over at the house, it seems like the, uh, we kind of named her as it looked like we had kind of a third daughter this week a little bit, kind of running around and stuff, but... Um, we had opportunity to visit with her, Kyler and I did anyway, about uh, angels and the things that we had been learning and the two different classifications. So we got to give her the, uh, uh, the classification names of the, of the angels and she kept, or not classification, but the uh, uh, kind of the, yeah, it is the classification we want to give it. The two uh, orders, we've got the, those angels that are the holy and elect and then we've got the devil and his angels. And we had to keep looking to Kyler to give us what the names of those were. The, remember the Posse Non Bacari and the Non Posse Non Bacari? And then, uh, what's the last one, Kyler? You got to help. Posse yeah. So we got those. The, what, are the two, what are the two classes that we have today, right now? What's the class of the faithful angels called? Non Posse Bacari, right? Okay. 
non posse peccari. Non posse Are the devil and his angels fall into that class. So we kept going over that. We were going over that with Aisha and she's, she looked at Kyler and Ky, Kyler was rattling them off. So uh, just remember, we've got, today we have the two classifications and now we're looking at the characteristics of the faithful angels, the rank of the angels, and last week we looked at uh, the archangels. Who remembers the two archangels that we have in the Bible? Yep, Terrence said Michael and Gabriel. So we finished that up, and now we're going to move into this week, and we're going to look at the next rank or characteristics of uh, the cherubim angels. And we're going to read quite a few scriptures here just to look at these, and that might not give us much more time uh, other than that. But as we read these scriptures here, I want you to start getting a picture of what the cherubim look like. Because after we read it and we'll go down here and we'll look at the description, you're going to be able to see what they really kind of look like and see a picture of it in your mind. You know, I've, I know that most people, if you ask them, well, is there any angels in the Bible that you can think of? A lot of people say, yeah, there's Michael and there's Gabriel. And then there's the cherubim. And then there's the seraphim. But a lot of people say, well, the cherubim and the seraphim are probably the same. Or they look alike. Well, there's some things that are the same, but they are different. So we want to be able to look to see what uh, the cherubim look like as God had uh, created them. So as we read through these, just be thinking about how they look. And we'll start with uh, the Genesis 3.24. We see them listed here in, in verse 24. It says, so he drove out man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So we see cherubims there to keep man from entering back into the garden, I guess, so that he wouldn't eat of the tree of life. And then, over into Exodus 25, Verse 18, And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work, shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat, and make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall you make, of, make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. Now Moses gets the law. He gets all the specifications for building of the temple. And notice it. He gives a little description. He's kind of making these out of gold, aren't they? And they're to be above the mercy seat. But he mentions that they have faces. So it gives me an indication as we read other passages that he, from God, knew what the cherubims looked like. And we're going to go into Ezekiel, uh, where we actually see what the cherubims really look like. So Ezekiel chapter 1, well the first reference that we gave there for Genesis 3.24 where we see the cherubims guarding the tree of life, do you think anywhere that we saw cherubim or cherub before that time mentioned in the scripture if we put everything together and kind of know the time frame? Anybody? So in Chapter, Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, we see the cherubims guarding the tree of life. 
But did we ever see in Scripture a picture of cherubim before that? No? You mean in Genesis 1 or 2? Okay, yeah. Any, any time in there. Genesis 1, 2, or 3? Okay, good. So we know that Satan in chapter 3, who was Lucifer, the chief cherub, no one other scripture. So we do see a cherub before that, don't we? 324. And then even if we look at before, we know that when God created them, possibly on day 4, that he would have created the cherubs too on that day. Now I know Dick doesn't think quite that they were created on day 4, but that's okay, right? That's okay. He's entitled to, to when he thinks they were created, right? I just got to give him a hard time. <laughs> okay, Ex or Ezekiel chapter 1. We're going to read quite a few uh, scriptures here. Verse 4 through about 28. But begin to see a picture of the cherub. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof, came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and everyone had four faces. Notice back the one that Moses said that he was talking about when he made him inside the tabernacle. They had how many faces? Four faces. So we see they have four faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and, their four, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another, they turned not when they went, they went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, the face of a lion. On the right side, they, had, they, they four had the face of an ox. On the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward, two wings of every one were joined one to another, and the two covered their bodies. And they were every one straightforward, whether the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of the flash of lightning. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold the wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with the four faces, the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of beryl. And they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went up their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them, and when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went, and when those stood, these stood, and when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creatures was as the color of, the, ter of a, the terrible crystal stretched forth over the heads above, and under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other. Every one had two which covered on this side, and every one had two which covered on that side their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, 
the voices of the speech as the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings, and there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as an appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of the amber, as the appearance of the fire round about within, from the appearance of his loins, even upward, and from the appearance of his loins, even downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so is the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. Notice when he gives a description of the cherubim, or it says here the living creatures, he doesn't appear to fall down on his face, does he? But once he sees the glory of the Lord, he falls before the Lord of glory. So we see many characteristics here, but notice they're not called in this passage cherubims. It says living creatures. But as we go to uh, chapter 10, where it gives a, another description of them, we notice that they are cherubim. So I'm going to read several verses here, two through. And I, again, I just want you to listen for what they look like, what the cherubims look like. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hands with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the Almighty when he speaketh. And it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubim's, then he went in and stood beside the wheels. And one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims under the fire that was between the cherubims and took thereof and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub and another wheel by another cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was as the color of a barrel stone. And as for their appearance, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went. And their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that were that they wheels that they four had. As for the wheels, it was it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel, and every one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, the second face was the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature, that I, living creature that I saw by the river Kabar. That's where he was in chapter 1. And when the cherubims went, the wheels went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. When they stood, these stood. And when they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also. The, for the spirit of the living creatures was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims. And the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheels also were beside them. And everyone stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house. 
and the glory of the Lord God of Israel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the God, under the God of Israel by the river Kabar. And I knew that they were the cherubims. I'll read a little bit first. Everyone had four faces apiece and everyone four wings and the likeness of the hands of the man was under their wings and the likeness of their faces was of the same faces which I saw by the river Kabar. Their appearance and themselves, they went everyone straight forward. Anybody notice? I know there's a lot that we read, a lot, lot that we read to actually kind of bring in. But he gave a description of the faces in Ezekiel chapter 1. And he gave a description of the faces in chapter 10. Did anybody notice a difference in one of the faces? Ox versus the cherub. Yep, ox versus the cherub. And to know when he actually sees it in chapter, in chapter 10 here, if we look the four, a description of the four faces, if you go to A.I., each had four faces. The face of the front was a face of a man. So the front face was the face of a man. The face on the right was the face of a lion. The face on the left was as an ox or a cherub. One of them said ox, the other one said cherub. And then the, the one that's on the back was the face of an eagle. So in the first one, it appears that he sees the face of a man first. But then in this one, he seems to see the face of the cherub first. Why would that be? Does that, because they don't turn, right? We looked at when they're moving, they're moving the same way, so they don't ever turn. So why would it be that he sees the face of the cherub on this one? When he, the first one, he saw the face of a man. Where he was standing. Where he was standing, yep, Shannon got... The position where he was standing at the first time, the first face that he saw was the face of a man. But on this one, he happens to, the way that the cherubs have moved, he actually sees the face of a cherub, which is also the face of an ox. And cherub really means part of it, if we look, why did he, name, why did he say ox in one time, and why does he say cherub the other time? It just really means to break forth like ground, to move forward like an ox would break forth and move the ground. So both really are meaning the same thing. If you want to call it the face of the cherub or the face of the ox, kind of all the same, all the same thing. Um, and each has, on number two, each has two pair of wings, one spread out from the middle of the back, and it was kind of more upward, and then the other pair was used to, Cover the body, which would be the second bullet. And the wings made a noise like waves crashing upon the seashore. Who's heard that before? Who's been at the sea and you've actually heard the waves come crashing in? Isn't it loud? I mean, you can hear it for a long way away. And that's kind of an example of what the, what the wings are sounding like when they're in movement that crashing as the seashore. And then we have an example, number three, of their legs. that have legs of, as of men, but their feet are cloven like calves' feet that shine like burnished brass. And they have four hands, human hands, with one located under each wing. So how many wings do they have? Four? So how many hands do they have? Four. So, and I'm trying to picture that in my mind. Underneath the wing, a man's hand. Can you picture it? That's a description. We're seeing it, aren't we? Under the wings, a man's hand. It's going to be creepy. <laughs> creepy. And then they travel in groups of four. The outstretched wings of each cherub touch those of the remaining three companions so that they form a square. Can you, can you picture it? The upper wings are stretched out. As the upper wings are stretched out, here's one. Then we have one. And then we have one here. And then we have one right there. <laughs> we got. So it's a square. And it's saying when they're moving, 
They're all moving just like this. They're not, it they're, doesn't look like they're turning like this, but they're moving kind of just in a, isn't that, what does that give you a picture of something that's, that the people have said or movies that you've said, seen before? Star Trek, the board. Yeah, like Star Trek stuff or, or UFOs. Don't they picture things like they move like this, but they don't ever turn a lot of times. They just, they just move like this and they set up and turn, but they don't. Where are they getting that? Satan's trying to twist things, isn't he? Because he knows. He knows how they move, doesn't he? So I'm going to try and get people diverted with UFOs and all this other things that aren't really even true with our God. So they move. They all move together. Now, did you notice when we read that, it said something about wheels? And that was, isn't that? Okay, we got wheels here. And it looks like each one of these cherubim have a, like a wheel to it. Right? So there, how many wheels is there? There's four wheels. With an inner wheel. And it kind of goes right with where, where it's at. Well, what are... The second passage that we read from Exodus, we see the cherubim where? Where are the cherubim that, that Moses were to make with, within the... Over the mercy seat. And how many were there? There was just two there. And they stretched over it. So it seems as if they're related with the glory of the Lord, the worship of the Lord within the holy of holies. Right? The most, the most holy place. Here they are. Where do we see, the, the, in Ezekiel 10, where do we see those cherubims? What's happening at the temple in Ezekiel 10. Did anybody catch that? I know there's a whole bunch there. It's like, how do we get anything out of this? I mean, we're trying to, we're listening for, you know, uh, what the cherubs look like. But what was going on in chapter 10? Did anybody pick up on it when we read it? Okay, they were hovering over the threshold of the temple. What's happening at the temple? What? Smoking inside, okay. Smoking inside. Usually, what what was what, what did it say filled the temple? What was in the temple? What was in the holy of holies? The Lord's glory. When right, what after Moses built the temple, what filled the Shekinah glory? So. In Ezekiel's time, when he's by the river Kabar, Israel, the southern kingdom, has been taken captive. And what's happening to the temple? What does Ezekiel see happen to the temple that they worshipped in with the Shekinah glory? What's the Shekinah glory doing of the Lord right here in chapter 10? Is it staying? It's departing. It's leaving, isn't it? But who do we notice there with that Shekinah glory as it departs the temple? The cherubims. The cherubims. And I think maybe the, the wheels, if we see the cherubim on it and we've got wheels and we see the glory of the Lord and it's kind of going up with the glory of the Lord, what, what do you have as a picture in your mind of four wheels and the cherubim moving together in a square? What would it kind of look like? Maybe. A wagon. a wagon or a, what's the Bible call? Chariot. Right? You got a picture of it, don't you? I'm very likely a chariot that's taking and going up with the Shekinah glory of the Lord. So the cherubim have to do, got to have to do a little bit with the Shekinah glory of the Lord, the worship and adoration of the Lord. And I'm going to end there. Yeah, because they guard the tree of life. Right? Over the mercy seat. Over the mercy seat. With the Shekinah glory. Good. So we got a little bit of a picture of the cherubim. Now, you might be asking yourself, this is the question I had in my mind all right, right off the bat. It's like, okay, now I'm thinking back to Satan. I'm thinking back to Lucifer. How does that make sense now? Does that mean that 
since he was of the cherub class, did he have three others that were with him? Or was he solo? What is it? That was a question I had, but we'll try and answer that as we go. So we go through. Keep, just give you a little. <laughs> there. Let's see here. I'll just close this with prayer. We got just about time to start our regular time. So sorry, I went a little bit, a little bit long. Father, thank you again uh, for this morning. I, I thank you for your word, Lord, as we've looked at it in uh, Genesis. We've looked at it in Exodus. Lord, in Ezekiel here, and just having a, an understanding of what's going on in, in the Word here and looking at uh, your creation. We're, we're looking, Father, at uh, the cherubims that you have created, Lord, and, and some of the uh, things that they're about, what they look like, Lord, in that uh, state that you created them in. And help us to see them, Lord, but in that, Lord, I just see the picture this morning again that you don't want us to focus on them. Because what we're looking at and focusing in on is your glory. And in that glory, the Shekinah glory, departing from the temple here and what we're looking at in that time frame. But Lord, we want our eyes this morning to look to your glory. We want to look to all that you are here. And we want you to be glorified here in, in our singing, in our worship, in our prayers, Lord. Be lifted up high here and... Uh, we just ask that you be in our service to follow. In Jesus' name, amen.